Hello. I want to go over the concept of scope boxes in Revit 2024. And to do that, I'm going to launch the template. I'm going to go new under models from the home page. I'm going to accept this Imperial multidiscipline template. Hit OK. It's the only option they give you. Hit OK. And you need to describe how these scope boxes work. Uh, currently, scope boxes appear in plan as these green dotted lines here, also in 3D. This is a crop box, and you can watch my previous video on crop boxes and how they're basically used to mimic the size of a scope box or be independent, depending on how they're set up. But if I go to 3D view here, you'll see that the, the, the project is, is surrounded by these boxes here. This box con controls the views. This box controls the grids. It basically controls the size of that drawing plane. Now these can be very useful because these scope boxes uh, exist throughout the entire project. And they can be assigned different purposes. And they can also be named. So for example, this one here, if I click on it, it's named view overall. This one here is named grids and levels. And that can make any, any number of other ones and as long as you give them a certain purpose. There's a rhyme and reason why you want to use these objects. You don't have to use them. You can delete them. Uh, if you don't have them, if they don't exist, you can create them. In, in plan view, you go to view and you go to scope box and you simply drag a box around the model. And then you give it a height, for example, 100 for 100 feet. And then here, when you click on it, you give it a name. Uh, test scope. And if I go to 3D view, you've got a now third box. This one here. And if I look at it in elevation view, you can see that it starts on the floor level zero. But I can make it I can make it taller. It can it's much, much taller than the, the other boxes, or I can make it smaller. I can use it for whatever purpose I want to. It's a way of controlling what you see on the screen when used properly. I'm gonna delete my new scope box called test scope, hit delete. I'm going to talk about the ones that exist here in Revit and 3D. Pick a corner here. So this one here called grids and levels is used to control the location of the drawing plane called a level. This is the level here. There's two levels that come with, auto, with the Revit automatically. And the size of that plane is infinite. But the visibility of how much of that infinite, infinitely large plane is present on the screen is controlled in this case by the scope box. So if I click on this box, you see that plane is only that big. However, in reality, in Revit, that plane is infinitely long. It goes in all directions. But in terms of what you can see by clicking on it, currently it's, it's using a scope box to control this blue plane that's normally invisible. And you can see here under the scope box, it's been assigned a scope box called grids and levels. So therefore, it's deferring to the size of the scope box to figure out how big it's going to be, how big to present. Otherwise, it's infinitely long. This one here is the same thing. It's assigned to that box. So if this box got smaller, then, sorry, this one here, um, control Z. Uh, this one here, this is the one on, called grids. It controls the location of that plane. You see the plane is moving? See that? And so they're in sync. Uh, so uh, you can create your own scope boxes. You don't have to use scope boxes. You can delete these if you like. And you can assign, uh, in this case, this crop region, you can assign it to the scope box. So the scope boxes exist throughout the model. Every view, every, every drawing per se, uh, has this invisible element surrounding the drawing. And, and in this case, if I want to change the, for example, the crop, this box around all the drawings, I've got to do it one by one. Each drawing has its own individual crop region. So I'd have to change it for every single view I'm producing. Every floor plan, reflective sitting plan, elevation drawing has their own unique crop. But why would I do that when I could basically create a scope box and have the scope box decide 
how big all the crops are going to be. And so I can just fix it in one place instead of a multitude of different drawings, different views. And so that's the, the idea here. So there was a scope box here called views overall. In the floor plan, they took this crop box and they basically assigned it to the scope box. They said, for, its, for your size, look to the view overall scope box. And that's how big you're going to be. And as soon as you do that, it deactivates the crop view option. You cannot turn it off. As soon as you assign it a scope box, you cannot uncheck this box. If you need to do some work and um, reveal things that are outside of this box, because it's hiding everything outside of the box, if you need to reveal that information, just basically change it to none. And then later, reassign it to a scope box if necessary. Okay, so that's that's the logic. And so you're not gonna be able to change the size of this this crop box because it's deferring to the size of the scope box. So if I change the scope box here and I moved it out a few feet, then by default the crop box moves with it. They're one and the same. And if I if I control Z to undo, it snaps it back. And so that's why crop boxes are here. Uh, and that's why scope boxes are used for two different purposes in this example. One is being used to control the levels in terms of the, the part of the level you see on the screen here, the, that blue plane. And the other one's used to control how much of the scene you can see. So I can only see inside this box here. Everything outside that box, something across the street, down the block, over the hill, you're not going to be able to see it because it's outside of this box. So it's a window into which you can see, like a paper space and model space window. Okay, that's it for scope boxes, what they do, their function, and between the tutorial video on crop boxes and scope boxes, uh, you should be able to understand how to uh, navigate Revit using these, these set of tools. Again, not required. But in this example, this template Revit provided in 2024, they're using it as a basis to start a project because they think it's much be much easier for you um, to begin a project. Okay, um, so uh, good luck with that, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, take care.